If you are looking into buying cheap and safe FIFA coins, look no further than footcoinshop.net. They have the fastest service, an incredible loyalty reward system, and the best prices around. Use my creator code INCEPTION when you sign up for your account and get a 5% discount with your order. Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have the tier list to do for these shapeshifters. Guys, honestly, this whole promo was a W. I think 90-92% um, of these cards are pretty good to use for the meta of the game. It, it was a really good promo. Uh, the SBCs I liked a lot. Uh, some people were liking, or, or excuse me, some people were disliking some of the SBCs. And I honestly don't know why they're really cool in their own ways. I think people are a little bit too specific to the meta. They just want Mbappes everywhere, you know. But it's good to do this tier list because if we take a look at, you know, some of the SBCs and all that kind of stuff, uh, it's good because we can kind of tell you guys what I think about the cards, you know, six days away. Uh, we got Sorla four days, so on and so forth, right? So, uh, you know, the tier list is not always the most accurate because sometimes I'm like, you know, I put a player here and then I just kind of switch them depending on the situations uh, for longevity. But yeah, anyways, the first card is going to be Eric Bailly. So Eric Bailly, um, for me personally, you can use him as a CDM for sure, but it is the type of card that, in my opinion, you start off as a midfielder to rotate into the center back position uh, with how he generally performs in game. Uh, it's still a card that I feel like EA did a pretty decent job with because when you provide this card with a shadow chemistry cell, he gets the 93 acceleration, 98 for sprint speed, good defensive stats, good physical stats, but it's a card that you have to do your best to rotate into that center back position, right? So for me personally, I don't necessarily mind adding him into the B tier category. I don't like rate him super, super highly as a CDM, but he plays it pretty well as well, right? But it just feels like a center back playing in that area, which is why I uh, try my best to play him in that center back position. When I played him as center back, he was pretty decent. It wasn't like crazy, but at a B tier, I don't mind putting him there. The players could change depending on the situations of uh, the cards that, you know, we review, right? So uh, Becker. So Becker ended up being really solid for me, actually. I actually like the card a lot. Um, I would say Becker and Bai are not too far off each other. Would I put an A tier for the center backs here? Hmm. Interesting situation for that one, for sure. Eric Bai. I don't mind putting Eric Bai at the B tier, honestly. Uh, Becker, I would probably put a little bit higher than Eric Bailly because you can actually start him in the center back position. So I think we'll just leave it like that. I think that makes the most sense for um, for how things generally are. Okay, so why is Becker a nice card to get? So Becker is a nice card to get because uh, this card is super cheap. You know, 67.5K is a really, really good price. But the card is four star, four star in games, medium high work rates, average body type. You provide it with the shadow chemistry style. It's a very, very well-rounded center back. Like honestly, using this card in the center back position for like a really cheap option worked out really nicely, especially since he could provide you that triple link, not triple link, but the three link setup uh, very easily because of his team and nationality not necessarily being the easiest to link, right? So um, I'm gonna do like this. Yeah, I'm gonna do it like this. I, I like I like the tier list like this so far. Fodder pretty good, right? And then B tier for, for Becker, don't mind putting him in there. Cause like Bremer and stuff, I'd put it like at an A tier. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe yeah, I, it's like, an, it's close to an S, so it's like an A, right? So yeah, anyways, uh, moving on. So next up we have is going to be Bruno Fernandes. So Bruno Fernandes, we're actually gonna add into, I would say, honestly, the S tier because uh, with Bruno Fernandes, he's a card that fits the criteria of the meta of the game really nicely. Um, obviously, if you're playing, honestly, in most formations, right? Like, I'll show you guys an example with Fernandez. So, uh, with Fernandez, it's kind of like, you guys know how in the beginning of the year, I enjoyed using uh, the Diogo Costa card a lot, right? I kept telling people that in my 4-2-3-1, he had to be used in the right-sided areas, yada, 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 because he plays those positions really well. So, uh, it's not any different with this Bruno Fernandes card because of the way that they formatted the card, right? So the fact that he is an explosive player that I can play in the side areas is what makes him really, really nice, right? With 
defensive capabilities because let's say for instance i need to switch from a 4-2-3-1 to a 4-3-2-1 i could do that easily and make this card my attacking oriented center mid uh, because of the defensive stats set up the way that it is with the high high work rates if i have to switch to like a three back formation where i have like the three forwards up top and i need like a right mid that offers me attacking and defensive capabilities boom bruno fernandez is there as well right so definitely an s tier category card five star skills four star weak foot it was a really cool card to use. Honestly, I was using him in a 4-5-1 formation being played in the right mid position because in that area, I can technically use like an attacking and defensive oriented card. And he played the area really well. Now, in this game, you guys know how it works. Even though he's got 99 dribbling stats, he's still on the physical side with his unique body type, but who cares because it's a card you're going to use mainly in those like midfield areas for the most part, right? So, um, but yeah, very solid card. Definitely enjoyed using him for sure. I'll add them into the S tier category just for now, okay? So, because I have, I have, I look at some other cards here and I'm like, okay, I know where I want to put them. Okay, Depay. Depay? I'm not going to lie. I want to put him at S. I want to put him at S. I really do. Um, it's, it's hard for me to not put him at S because Depay, guys, is a type of dude that actually has defensive stats. So, if I'm playing in like a 4 triple 2 setup, or I'm playing in a setup where, you know, because guys, look, look, just look at this card in game, right? We ended up doing his review a little bit later down the road while we were doing some uh, tactic reviews as well. 452 sounds like a very reasonable price for this card because one center mid and cam position changes is very nice to work with to be able to put him in any of the main attacking positions, any of the main midfield positions, because you could provide this card with a hunter chemistry style. He has the pace, he has the shooting capabilities, and he has the defensive capabilities as it is too. And it's a card that will feel more agile than most, right? At the end of the day, you still need players that dribble really nicely. The physical, the physical oriented cards are always going to be on a lower rank unless they're like Ronaldo or something, right? Like the both of Ronaldo's really, because they're both physical type attackers that are absolutely fantastic. But yeah, Depay is great, man. I was using Depay in that 3-4-1-2 formation. I don't know if you guys checked it out, but basically in that formation, in the cam position, because of the glitch of the comeback and defense instruction on the cam, which EA never fixes, they go into the side positions. A card like this that has defensive stats just adds to that defensive presence in the team, right? So it's a great card, you know, five star skills, four star weak foot works out great. Sure, sometimes his left stick has like this physical side to it, but honestly, I thought the card was fantastic. So I don't mind adding him into the S tier category for now um, from what I'm seeing. Honestly, I might have to do this because I'm thinking of one of the S tier category cards and uh, it makes me want to put him up there, but we're going to we're going to see accordingly. I actually want to do this. Yeah, we're going to see. We're going to see how this uh, kind of goes out, right? Okay. So, Frankowski is the next card. Uh, Frankowski, they actually did a very good job with it as well, right? I'm going to put him with Becker as well. Um, again, another premium version of the Shapeshifters cards. Uh, Frank Frankowski was a surprising one because a lot of the times, guys, when cards don't have base stats set up a certain way for them to be really good in game, they don't end up being that great. This Frankowski card was actually really good in game. I thoroughly enjoyed using him, mostly in those right sided positions. Now, the only reason why I'm dropping him a little bit of tears is only because of the three star weak foot, which, to be fair, didn't really mind it that much, to be honest with you, because the five star skills to get into certain positions always compensates, especially when you're on the right hand side because of the way that you shoot and stuff, right? But it's also because of the average body type, because you do feel the average body type from time to time. It's a little bit hurtful to put him in the b tier i would i would consider him definitely in a, a mid range between these two but the b tier and up are very very solid cards that i would definitely use in the higher divisions and frankowski is no different it's a card that gives you links to anybody right so the links to anybody part is already a massive w to work with uh but he actually performs really well in game like he surprised me because again like i was mentioning earlier these cards are usually the types of dudes that don't really perform that crazy right so yeah uh, Thorgan, I'm also going to add into the B tier. I don't mind adding him into the B tier at all. I think the SBC was good. Uh, when I was first getting into the promo, I forgot to mention in the actual review video that he is also a person that is a Shapeshifters premium card, which adds to the card, right? I think the dislikes are unwarranted because for 71k, for a guy that's Belgian, uh, that provides you with air divisi teams in the future, it's great because, listen, let's say, for instance, you guys use the 
uh, Shavi Simmons card, right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's his name is Shavi or Javi Simmons. You know, uh, don't watch the Air Divisie too much. But this guy is from PSV, gives you Dutch links, and he's actually really solid in game. I enjoyed using him a lot. 397k is fair value for that general area. So that PSV link by itself is sick, right? But he gets you links to anybody. He is a left footed player on the left hand side, four star, four star on an anchor chemistry style. He was generally positioned on the pitch really nicely. So as an SPC, didn't mind him whatsoever. I don't consider him like an A or S tier card. Absolutely not. But as a B tier, it definitely warrants that position at the very least. Uh, Hierro, uh, I would say Hierro is in the fodder, pretty good realm. Uh, he's like, uh, he's like this, man. He's like a combination of the two. I didn't add the other one because I think they have like the same stats. I used Hierro for a little bit and I actually liked the card. Uh, but a few things to mention when it comes to Hierro that I want to show you guys. So with this card in game, he is a controlled player, uh, controlled player, six foot two, high, high work rates, average body type on a shadow chemistry style. This is how he's formatted, right? It's a little bit. I'm, I, I don't like adding him into the fodder pretty good because his position is good to use, is good to use, right? With by, I have to kind of rotate my team a certain way to play him at center back the most in my opinion, because I think with CDMs, I'd rather use a couple of different cards. But with Hero at right back, I don't mind putting him there. I will say that because of the height at six foot two average body type while being controlled, um, it would have been nice if he was a lengthy, but at the same time, it's, that's a stretch. Like it's a huge stretch. Cause uh, to be honest, the car was actually pretty good in the right back position. Didn't mind him whatsoever. He has the pace, he has a defending, but because he's on the physical side at six foot two, I wish it was like, you know what I mean? Uh, with certain cards, you don't really care that much, but it has to be like unique bad boys. Like, uh, like this guy right here, you know, Theo Hernandez, this guy right here controlled player but uh you know he's got the animation sauce but yeah i don't mind putting hero at, hero in the uh, b tier category either i think uh a fodder pretty good would be i think that'd be a little bit harsh for him personally i think it'd be a little bit harsh um links okay so links i'm kind of like i'm gonna put links in the b tier as well uh links is actually pretty good as a gameplay objective you guys should try out this card okay uh I'm going to probably uh, just rotate some of these guys here and there. I'm going to put links. Frankowski with backer. Yeah, I'm going to put it like this. OK, like this. So uh, if you guys watch the review for links, links was a really, really solid card. It's hard to say B tier for links. Yeah, types of player that he is. You know, it's it's interesting, though, because yeah, because Depay has the five star skills in defense, so I don't mind adding him into the A tier and then links with the B tier, good lack of skill moves and stuff. But guys, the thing is, right, is that even though he has the lack of skill moves, the card is actually pretty good in game. Like it, it actually is. I'm not even joking. And he's so easy to unlock too. three different games to unlock. I think it was eight goals, six assists, which honestly go into a friendly match, invite one of your boys and then lock the card that way. Um, yeah, no, they did a good job with this card. You know, a South African player that actually performs really well in FIFA, because to be fair, I don't think they have anybody. They have this guy, but I haven't seen him used one time. So yeah, no, that was a W gameplay objective. Guys, honestly, the only thing, the only two things that was off with this card was that his body type makes him feel more physical than agile. Like his short and lean minus is definitely on the more physical side, which who cares? I use him on the left side, I, I couldn't care less, right? And then the other thing was obviously um, the lack of skill moves, right? So because uh, a card like Depay has a skill moves and he has a defense, that's why I'm putting him a little bit higher uh, in the attacking areas. But yeah, as I'm mentioning, the card is very good as a gameplay objective. You genuinely cannot go wrong with it. And it's a Shapeshifters premium card too. So it gives you links with anybody. So that's obviously uh, a W as well. Uh, Alvarez will put into fodder. I don't really need to talk about that one too much, to be honest. Uh, people will maybe use that for the Eredivisie teams. Let me let me take a look at this because guys at the end of the day I've seen him already used for fodder, right? So let's just let's just take a look here. Alvarez. I mean, technically speaking, you could make him a, a lengthy player on a marksman. Yeah, you could do that. It's it's a if fodder 
I think people are going to use it for fodder, though, honestly. With the Eredivisie guys, like, he's he's going to be more fodder, I think. Uh, fodder pretty good. Fodder pretty good. Fodder pretty good. I'm going to put him in fodder. Pretty good, I think. I Bayou, Bayou would actually be used. Alvarez, I think people will use for SBCs for the most part. Um, yeah. Mares. Mares is S tier. He's S tier, for sure. He's S tier. Uh, definitely a better attacker than Depay, I'll tell you that much for free. Uh, Mares in game, they did a really good job with. I don't know if you guys watched the review for this card, but he was doing some saucy things for me, right? Uh, positioning was fantastic. Shooting with both feet, fantastic. Uh, dribbling in game, fantastic. Like, it was just a very, very good card, right? If you get lucky enough, uh, to pack this bad boy in your team. He has all the right things that you need, right? He's got the finesse shot trade. He's got the outside foot shot trade. He's a five-star, five-star player. Explosive. Like, uh, there's not really much else to say, right? It's a really, really well-formatted card. Definitely deserves the S tier. Thoroughly enjoyed using him. You know what I like about Mares? I like the five-star weak foot over on that right-hand side because he's a left-footed player, so I can go in for finesse shots too. So that the meta is kind of crazy to work with there. Okay. Or Cellini. Uh, guys, Orsolini, Orsolini, I'm gonna, like, I know people are using this card for fodder, okay? Fodder pretty good. I know people are doing that, but Orsolini's actually pretty decent in game. I tried him for a little bit in some people's teams, um, and he was actually pretty nice, okay? I'm only putting him that low because with fullbacks, like, there's, there's, when you use certain fullbacks, you can kind of tell when they're, like, super, super nice, but Orsolini in game, honestly, was really cool to use super cheap card italian Serie A links like take a look at the way that this card is formatted right if i give him an anchor chemistry style it's a nice card you know it's a nice card and in game it performs well too because in his case you know he's also six foot two or uh, six foot as well with an average body type so that kind of stuff obviously works out um so yeah it's a great card i didn't really mind the links uh I, I, it would be super harsh to put him in fodder pretty good i think in b tier uh, is definitely fair for him because he actually performs pretty nicely in game. He has all of the right things, okay? Uh, Pele, obvious S tier as well. I think Pele is really, really good. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you, man. When it comes to Pele's card, right? Let me just uh, do this real quick. Okay, so when it comes to Pele's card in general, in my opinion, I think that his other versions, I never tried the 98, right? But there is, uh, what are the other versions? It's like 95 and stuff. 95? I think it's a 95. Yeah, 95 and then like the 91. So I tried out some of those cards on some people's accounts. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I didn't really like him that much. I, it's not It's not necessarily that he's bad at that price. No, no, no. He or Well, for the price, yes. If you pack him, he's good, okay? But the price you're paying for, I was like, I always used to think I was using people's accounts. I was like, you know what? Pele should feel better in game. There's something wrong with this card. I don't know what it is. I couldn't tell you. I don't know if it's his unique body type. I always used to think it was a unique body type every single time. Right? I was like, you know what? Because they did the same thing to a Zebu. A Zebu is like a weird one too. Uh, but Pele is nice. If you pack him, he's a great card to use. But like, he should feel way better. You know what I mean? With the new version, completely different. He's really, really good. Like, uh, dude, when you use cards like this, sometimes you just fly with them, honestly. Like, the 10.9 million coins, and listen, I'm being honest with you guys, because when I reviewed his Zebu, Zebu was a 10 million coins, and I... It would be hard to put him at the B or A tier. Like, not hard, but, like, I'd put him at the B or A tier, right? Because that card, like, his body type ruins him, right? But with Pele, he has all the right stuff. Like, they did a really good job with this card. He actually feels special. The key word here is special in-game, right? He actually feels really good. Attacking AI, shooting, passing um pretty much anything right like the shooting it's funny because i hit the post in one of the situations for my goal scoring opportunities and it's just like that's just fifa you know if you don't green time your strikes you don't hit strikes a certain way things happen you know what i mean things happen so yeah uh next up is antonio rudiger which we're gonna add into the a tier category um rudiger was actually really nice now obviously for me personally a couple of things that this is just a personal thing okay so i prefer to not have a high high work rate i prefer to have like a high medium or a high low if you're playing as my striker however if you're playing as one of my two strikers i don't mind it as much right because when we're using rudiger i think it was either on that left hand side or right hand side and we was using mbappe next to him and rudiger actually felt pretty nice in game so a lot of people could probably just give this card like an engine chemistry style boost the defense boost the pace boost the passing for me personally 
if I'm going to use a physical oriented player like this that is formatted in that way, I'm just going to give him um, a chemistry style that makes him a lengthy, right? So was it artist that I used on him before? I don't remember. I don't think it was artist, man. I think I gave him a basic. Basic. What is a basic? Am I blind? Yeah, basic. Yeah, because basic messes with dribbling stats a little bit. Some shooting, some passing, and some physical to see what the card was like. And then I think I said at the end that I would give him a different chemistry style. Regardless, though, in-game, performed really well. You know what I'll say right now is that the shot power at a 99 with a 5-star weak foot, very noticeable. The very first goal that I scored in the review for the card was a fantastic goal scoring opportunity, like a really, really good one, because he's facing at a 45, facing away from the net, and he still slaps the ball, okay? Did a really good job. Uh, obviously, for me, I liked him on the lengthy because once I get that one push touch, he's gone. You know what I'm saying? That lengthy is always gonna be crazy to work with. And passes came off really nicely. It just felt like a really good card. So I think adding him into the A tier uh, category, definitely very fair as well. So. Yeah. Um, next up is going to be Rykard. I don't mind adding Rykard into the B tier category. I think they did a pretty decent job with this card as well. Uh, for me personally, I enjoyed using him the most uh, when I switched to a lengthy. The moment I switched to a lengthy on this card, uh, I felt like he played significantly better for me because I gave him an engine and I was like, if I'm going to use a card like this, the same situation as Rudiger, like there's no point in me doing all that, right? Like the physical side of the card a high and average plus high medium like i need him to make the lengthy runs because the first thing that i noticed when i gave the card an engine chemistry style is that he made really good runs but for me to utilize the really good runs that the card does i had to make him a lengthy so that it really pushes those runs and once i did that he performed significantly better right so um yeah the b tier category don't mind adding him there was it a hawk i gave him i think it was Engine, Shadow, Hunter. I definitely gave him something. I can't remember what it was, though. So many reviews, like, you know what I mean? You have to go watch the videos, guys. Um, but yeah, on a lengthy, he performed significantly better. I just worked with the agility and balance as it is, which I didn't really care too much about because obviously when it comes to five-star skills, that is your form of dribbling at some point, right? So uh, yeah, don't mind him at the B tier. B tier category, definitely, uh, definitely okay for me. Uh, Socrates also an S tier card. I like what they did with this card. I think uh, I think they got to do this more often to the icons that are not necessarily usable. We're gonna be talking about that in the probably the video before this one with Raquel May, right? But Socrates is 660k, right? 660k for what the card is like on the market right now is nice. People are actually packing this guy a lot in that uh, most recent Shapeshifters SBC and. Honestly, he was like really, really good to get. Like if you got him, uh, good for you because this card can be played in multiple ways, right? So obviously in his case, uh, you could potentially give him the engine chemistry style. You can give him the shadow chemistry style. You can give him the hunter chemistry style, but it all depends on what you end up doing in game, right? So obviously with his dribbling stats out of the way that it is, center mid CDM position changes you can use them anywhere in the midfield setup some people were asking if I, they could use this card in the cam position for the 3412 that i showed you want someone that feels a little bit more agile there right so if you have defensive stats you want more agility in the midfield area however center mid cdm right mid position even left mid because he has a five star weak foot you could do that the card will be perfectly fine in those areas uh even if i was to play like a 442 and now we're to give him like an engine chemistry cell in that left or right sided area, that would be fine too, right? Depending on what you want to do in game, but definitely more of an actual midfielder um, as much as you could possibly do. Uh, next up, we have Sorloth. Uh, Sorloth is actually pretty good. Another SPC that they did that was very cheap. The only, the only thing I will say about that SPC, right, is that they should have given him the premium part uh, the premium parts on his SBC because the fact that they didn't is really dumb because Sorloth, right? 55k, the value of the SBC is great. If you if you're working with a Liga Santander team, you're chilling. The card's actually pretty good in game. Very tall, gets reach tackles like crazy on a consistent basis, right? You got to work with that type of stuff when you use a card like that, right? For 55k, you still couldn't go wrong with it. But the links, man, it was just the links to kind of get him going into different teams. That's the part that kind of threw me off a little bit because uh, Real Sociedad, they ain't got nothing unless EA does like a special David Silva card, which they already did earlier in the year. The only card that you can work with 
for meta as of right now is Marino. Marino is definitely like actually pretty decent in game, right? So if you were to do that and you needed that double link setup, then that's obviously one of the things you could do. But for everything else, like, I mean, you're not going to really use this goalkeeper for the center back link, right? So yeah, the, the only thing was the SBC, obviously um, the SBC not being like a premium. It should have been a premium. It would have been really cool. Okay, next up we have is Toko Ikambi. So Toko Ikambi, this is how he's formatted in game, right? So this card is 65k on the market. Uh, you provide him with an anchor chemistry style. It's still going to be a pretty decent left back to use, right? So obviously in his case, with the four star weak foot, high, high work rate, six foot one, perfect pace, good defense, good physical capabilities. It's yet again another pretty decent card to get for 65k. Why? Because he provides you the links with pretty much anybody and you're not going to sacrifice his position to play him in another position. Like you're going to mostly use this card as an actual left back, but you could actually technically use this card on a finisher chemistry style and use him in the left mid position if you end up switching that in game, right? To boost his shooting, boost the dribbling and stuff. Definitely something you could do if you really want to, right? I could also see people giving him the engine chemistry style because of the way the card is formatted generally if they were to use him as a left mid. But like I said, definitely more of an actual left back in a person's team because of the way that he's formatted. So uh, I don't mind adding him into the, um, into the, uh, I would say fodder good. Little harsh, I would say, I would say here, because uh, with Bai, the only reason why he's there is because of the position change, because it's more of a center back, in my opinion. Uh, um, TT, I'm going to put um, TT in the A tier, right? Um, TT is pretty cool as well. So here's the thing, two different types of cards. I was mentioning this in the review as well. So people will look at cards like this, right? And they're like, oh, too physical. I don't want to use it, right? Guys, physical players in this game can still perform really well, right? Obviously, when it comes to responsiveness, a lot of people are gonna to prefer to have players that will left stick a little bit better, right? Feel uh, more responsive with like the lean by type, whatever it is. This card, you have to work with the physical, okay? When I adjusted my play style to him, he actually worked out perfectly fine. When I say that, I mean, try to get into situations where you can scoop turn, use his body, get into situations where you can go for a cross and he can score a header because the card has very, very solid attacking AI. He's a left footed player on the left hand side, right? So a card like this, if I were to play, like just generally speaking, you could give him a marksman chemistry style to boost his physical attributes a little bit more, right? Because that's kind of like how the card generally performs like in game with his unique body type, six foot tall. It is, it does feel like a center back being moved into the left sided area, but you can also give him a finisher, right? A finisher chemistry style or an engine chemistry style and the card will feel a little bit more responsive in that dribbling department. For me personally, because of shot power being really high, I genuinely wouldn't mind using him on an engine because he, he would feel a little bit more responsive on it. Uh, but then you could also give him a finisher chemistry style to boost those parts of the card as well. Because when it comes to dribbling capabilities, the agility, balance, and dribbling parts, you notice more than the other three, okay? So it's a card that I'm definitely gonna add into the A tier category. I like the SBC, left-footed player on the left-hand left, left -hand side. You can't go wrong with that, right? And he's also French. So um, yeah, people were complaining about this one because again, people don't wanna deal with like the physical dudes, which I get I get a little bit, but you know. Uh, Opumakano is the next one. I like this card as well. Uh, Opumakano, again, physical oriented. Guys, listen, if you hear me say, physical like you you know he's physical it's not going to be for everybody because i know that i know a lot of people in the top divisions that usually use cards that are more responsive okay it happens all the time there are very few physical cards that people will use on a consistent basis in the top divisions because they don't want to deal with that okay with the pumacano this card was also really nice i was explaining to people in the player review that the main way that you want to use this card right is two different ways for the most part right it's attacking oriented center mid as well as the right mid position in a three back formation because he has a physical element to his card, right? He does feel physical in game because of his high and stocky body type, six foot one. So that would throw people off, right? For me, you work with that because his physical stats is crazy. So if you were to give him an engine chemistry style for a card that actually has some defensive stats, those are the main ways you have to use the card. Now, 
technically speaking, if you use them in the main attacking positions, like let's say, for instance, you decide to use them as like a right attacking mid in like a 4-2-3-1 or anything like that, you could totally do that. No problem, right? But he's always going to have his best positions that you're supposed to utilize him. I played a couple of foot champs games with him in the center mid area, and the way that he would get involved in the attack was nice. I liked it, you know, whether it was on his weak foot or his strong foot, utilizing the skill moves to open up space. It was nice. I liked it. I think most of the SPCs were actually pretty good, to be honest. Like, it's it's just one of those promos, in my opinion. Van Dyke, guys, I have to put him like, I have to put him first, and then I'll, I'll do I'll do this. Look, look, that's what I'm going to do. Mares, yes. Uh, Pele. Pele Mares, yeah, Pele. Pele Mares, yeah, Louis Bruno, Bruno Socrates, or, uh, Bruno Socrates, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do it like this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it like this. Um... Van Dyke's Van Dyke is like the the reason why I'm putting him first is because like if if I had another tier he'd be in the S star tier it'd be like S star tier would be like these three I would say like these these three eh, he's, uh, an argument can be made argument can be made listen Van Dyke is is he he's got to be expensive I gotta see I gotta see because he was extinct for a little bit I have to check there's when it comes to meta cards guys. When it comes to meta cards, like full meta cards, they don't really go down in price, okay? Like Socrates, you notice he's at 600k because Socrates is not Van Dyke, okay? I guarantee you Van Dyke is so expensive. Let me see. I knew it. I knew it. He is like... Here's the thing about this card, okay? If you decide to use him as a midfielder, you don't have to do this like sacrificing thing like you do with Bailly, where it's like you can use him as a midfielder, but he's more of a, like a center back. No. This card is crazy in the midfield position or the center back position. It doesn't matter because the way that you're supposed to use him is obviously in a more defensive oriented way. But guess what? This card on the attack is actually really solid to work with because of that five star weak foot and passing capabilities. I don't know if you guys saw the review, but there was actually like three or four different attacking opportunities that if I didn't have a five star weak foot with high passing capabilities, I wouldn't get those opportunities that I got. Another thing that I have to mention is that Van Dyke is one of the craziest guys in this game for defensive animations. Like, his transition speed is insane. His defensive animations is insane. And they gave him five-star weak foot on top of all the insanity, okay? So he already has all the animations, and you gave him a five-star weak foot. So he's going to maintain price. I highly doubt he goes significantly lower, to be honest with you, because I could see if pro players don't use Van Dyke, I would be mind blown, to be honest, unless it's like a link problem or something, you know? But yeah, Van Dyke is definitely an S tier category card. Don't mind adding him there. Uh, Van Persie, another card that did pretty decent job with, uh, gonna add him into the B tier category. I like the variable of what they were working with when it comes to both of these cards, because with the cam version of Van Persie, they gave him defensive stats, okay? So the part of giving him defensive stats is vital because when it comes to usability, a lot of people use the 4-3-2-1, a lot of people use uh, three backs. So if they play him in like a left mid position, they could do that. For the meta, this card is not fully intended to be used as a main striker up top, unless you're doing it mostly for fun, right? For fun, but meta. Like you could actually make him work up top. I was doing it and it was perfectly fine. But if you actually get into the higher tier divisions, most people will use him as an actual midfielder because of the defensive stats they gave him while giving him an engine chemistry style, five-star weak foot, left-footed, high, medium, high, and average. Like he has a lot of very good stuff to work with, right? So it's a card that did a pretty decent job with. Definitely a B-tier category card because the defensive stats, right? And the five-star weak foot's really cool to work with too. So don't mind adding him uh, into the B-tier category. Uh, Van Persie, gonna be an A-tier category card. I think they did a very, very solid job with Van Persie because a couple key things to mention, right? So obviously, I always tell you guys this, man, because every time they've been do they've been doing this recently with like all the new cards, left-footed player with five-star skills, four-star weak foot, okay? So when it comes to using two striker lineups, right? For a card that has five-star skill moves, it's a very, very big variable to work with, right? So a card like this, you know, you could go either direction. You give him the Hawk, you give him the engine, it's really up to you. At the end of the day, he still feels physical oriented because of the high and average body type. If he was a four star, four star, I would have dropped into the B tier for sure, okay? But because of the five star skill moves, like you guys saw in the review, if you guys actually watched the video, right? 
the five star skills it, it's it's so important to work with when it comes to attacking in the higher tier divisions it really is right the only reason why cards like frankowski and links are not higher is because of the lack of uh either weak foot or skill moves for consistency right but with Van Persie, he has the skill moves, and it's a card that is left-footed. That's the key thing, a left-footed player with five-star skills that has the shooting capabilities and that has the traits as well, right? If you take a look at the traits, he has the outside foot shot, chip shot. Chip shot animation is 100% a thing, but the outside foot shot for those shots across a goal, you guys know how that goes. It's it's very, very noticeable in game. So definitely going to add him into the A-tier category. Don't mind doing that. And then Vitinha also going to be in the A tier category. Um, generally speaking, guys, Vitinha, in my opinion, regardless of him being Portuguese, because people always have this like a pre uh, disclosed opinion of me of if a card's Portuguese, he's in immediately a W. No, a card needs to be Portuguese, but a W. That's the that's the key thing here. OK, guys, listen to what I'm going to say about Vitinha's card. So like I mentioned in the review, he does have a weird left stick sometimes. There are moments in game where it is very strange, okay? Um, it's like I showed you guys in the review. You can see like the actual animation happening uh, when he does it. But I'm telling you guys, work around that because this card in the left-sided areas is really solid, right? If you watch my 3412 video, I was using him as the left striker. Fantastic stuff. Uh, left attacking mid cam if you're using him as a left center mid in a 4-3-2 one as the attacking right to player uh you know left mid position uh, the card is still really really nice it's a it's a great sbc that ea released because not only does he perform well in game but it's a card that gives you fantastic links guys like in my opinion it's a card that you will genuinely miss out on if you don't do because portuguese PSG, League One, striker, left wing, center for position changes is insane, guys, okay? Yes, the left stick is sometimes weird. I'm not going to say that it isn't, right? But I work around that because he's a card that I'm going to use in that side area anyways. You know what I'm saying? Like, it has to be, my team has to be formatted in a way where he's always in that side position. Left foot, left foot, left foot. So many times I get into goal scoring opportunities. Left foot strikes great. Right foot strikes great. I kept telling you guys in the review. The, the shooting of the card is really, really well compensated in game, okay? So definitely an A-tier category card. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed using him. Now I'm gonna look at this list for a second. Honestly, not really against who I put where. Uh, I'm really not. I, I think for most of these cards, uh, definitely deserve to be where they're at for the most part. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't mind this. I don't mind this. Uh, I'm TT, I'm TT, I rate higher, Apumacano, Van Persie, Van Persie, uh, Rudiger, I liked Rudiger, honestly, a five-star weak foot, man, it's Apumacano, eh. I wouldn't look into the, the order too much, but the first guys, I definitely need to add them a certain way, like it needs to happen. Socrates, good player. Lower side of the S tier for sure. I don't mind that whatsoever. Van Dyke, just skyrocket. Skyrocket, my friend. I'm not against this tier list, honestly. Um, I think this promo in general was a massive W. The only card in this entire team that's like kind of whatever is Alvarez for the most part, but even he's usable, right? Like I can put him there if I really wanted to. Like I, I genuinely wouldn't really mind it. Fodder, pretty good, you know, like. Oh, pretty good. It's a sh uh, he's lengthy. You can use it, but you know, uh, Toko Akambi. I don't mind adding there as well. To be honest, it's like one of those types of situations. Um, but B tier is like not bad for him either. It's like it's like a combination of the two. You know, the only reason why Eric Bai is even there is because of the position change, right? Like like I said, it's a card that I would rather use as an actual center back, but. This whole promo is really good. All of these cards over here and up, like I can see people using them because like some of them provides you like really good links to work with. Um, I wouldn't look into the order of this one here too much. Hierro, Thorgan, Orsolini. Yeah, don't look into the order of this one too much. The rest of them you, you can a little bit. The top for sure and stuff. I'm okay with this. I like this tier list. Yeah, I like this. The pie I liked a lot. Vitinho is fantastic. I'm TT physical side, but still very good. Rudiger five star weak foot was great. Work with the high highs and stuff. Uh, Upa McConnell on the more physical side, which is why he's on the lower side at A, but still very good. Uh, Van Persie five like it's it's good. I'm okay with this. 
yeah i'm uh, totally cool with this tier list i think he's uh i think this is good i think this is good I, I don't think i'd really change too much from here yeah i'm not gonna change too much from there okay guys thanks for watching the video i'll catch you guys for the next one peace out dudes love you guys